Louisa, have you come to my house yet? I'm sorry I couldn't pick you up at the airport because I had an emergency patient at the hospital. Are you excited to spend your birthday with us? Don't worry about your mother-in-law you haven't seen in six months. I'm more excited to see my grandchildren that you insist on keeping me away from. I've tried three times to schedule a visit since Christmas, but you've canceled every single one. That's not exactly what happened. Oh, really? So last time I said I was going to visit your family on Jonathan's birthday, didn't you tell me it was too late to book a plane ticket? But only three days later, I found out that my neighbor had booked a ticket on that flight and even got a window seat. When I asked, my neighbor said she booked the ticket that very morning. What? Don't you think it was a waste of money to not get me a ticket? What? It's not like that. I have never regretted your money. Maybe your neighbor was lucky to get a ticket because someone else canceled theirs. Oh, really? You're making excuses. And what about the second time when I wanted to visit your family because I just harvested a lot of delicious agricultural products? But you said your family was visiting your mother's house. That's fine, but you never took the initiative to bring my lovely grandchildren to visit me. Do you do that because you don't like me and don't want those beloved grandchildren to love me and be close to me? Louisa, you know my mom was sick last time. I was afraid that she would feel very bored and lonely in the hospital, so I often brought the children to play with her. But it's not like I'm ignoring you, right? I still call you often to check on you, but every time I call, you scold and nag at me. What? How dare you say that the lessons and guidance I gave you on being a mother and wife are nagging and not worth your ear? And what about the family gathering a month ago? Why were you absent and didn't let Jonathan bring the kids home just because you were on duty at the hospital? Is your job that important? I mean, you're just a part-time nurse, and the hospital could find someone else to take your place. Oh, coincidentally, it was the kids' final exams. So, I can't just make them skip school to go to a party. What? Just a party? Do you know it's a once-a-year opportunity for me to brag about my successful son? You are really good at arguing. If it weren't for my birthday, you wouldn't even notice this old woman until death, right? No, I can't argue with you. I'm just trying to explain to you that I don't hate you. Come on, you're here anyway. Let's forget about the past and happily look forward to the family trip to Hawaii. Ha <laughs> ha, you evade again, as always. And why is the house cluttered and filled with things that are toxic to the kids like this? Huh? I kept my house clean because I know how fastidious you are. The kids are at home playing. Oh, I see. You're letting my Maxie's brain rot by playing video games again. And Penelope is watching movies that are not appropriate for her age. What happened to the books I bought them for Christmas? They've read them all already. Louisa, are you misunderstanding something? Penelope only watches cartoons, and I have set a limit to only show children's movies under 7 years old for Penelope. And Maxie only plays video games for 30 minutes a day, and then goes out to play some sports. Since it's spring break right now, I also want to let the kids have fun. Oh really? I guess you don't want my gifts to be near your children. So where did you throw them all away? Oh no, Louisa, I certainly wouldn't do that. Why do you always think that I hate you and want to separate you from my family? Can we not talk about it and try to get along? Anyway, you're going to Hawaii with my family for a week, and you don't want to fight every day, right? So, how was your flight? Long. Horrible. And I was stuck in the middle seat, which I assume you planned. No, I was on the phone with the airline for over an hour trying to get you an aisle or a window seat, but they were sold out. Before you assume, you should really try asking. Oh, look what I found in this kitchen. A pile of vegetables chopped by the children? Oh, that's the ingredients I prepared for the vegetable stew. Well, I'm not surprised by your cooking skills, either. Ugh, that's terrible. Did you buy cheap tea to entertain me or something? Where do you keep the honey? Why can't I find it? Oh, we don't keep any in the house. I'm highly allergic. I'm also extremely allergic to you wasting food, Corrine. Why is the trash can full of fresh tomatoes? Um, they're actually spoiled. Well, cut off the spoiled parts and use the good parts. Don't waste money. Well, to be fair, there aren't really any good parts left. That is wasteful thinking. I'm guessing it must be really nice to be married to my son, a big-time lawyer. At least you're not living on your part-time nurse's salary. But you don't seem to like this mother-in-law very much, do you? I bet you don't even want me going to Hawaii with your family. Look at you, you express it so clearly. I mean, the way you so rudely kicked me out of the house after Thanksgiving, but let your mom stay as long as she wanted. Did you forget something? 
I never kicked you out of the house. Wasn't it you who rushed home because you said you had a date to practice dancing with your friends in your hometown? I even helped you carry your stuff to the taxi, and then you were mad at me for weeks for not letting you stay. Moreover, my mother only stayed for one more day because both Jonathan and I had to go to work the next day. So I asked her to stay at home and take care of the children. And I'm happy that you can join us in Hawaii, really. Ridiculous, do you think I will believe your nonsense words? I won't let you leave me at home and have fun. You better not think I'll be nice to you just because of this trip. Oh my God, what's going on? Corrine, you're a manipulative and conniving person. Even if you don't want me to travel with your family, you can't destroy my stuff like that. Do you know how much money I spent on all those clothes to prepare for the trip? Huh? Louisa? What's wrong with your clothes? Yesterday I washed them like you asked, didn't I? This morning before I left, everything was fine, right? Are you sure you followed the instructions I gave you? Did you hand wash everything one by one in different water temperatures? Oh no. I was so tired that I forgot about washing by hand, so I threw them all in the washing machine. But what's wrong? I took them out to dry this morning before going to work and found everything still intact, right? Until now, you still dare to ask me? I just asked you to do such a trivial thing, but you can't do it? Do you see that all of my beautiful clothes are crumpled and paler than before they were washed? You are so selfish. Just because you don't want to go on a trip with me, you mercilessly ruined my clothes. And now I have to cancel the trip and go home, right? It's not like that. Just that yesterday you told me to do your laundry too late. And I had to be on duty at the hospital for 18 hours in a row without a break before taking time off to travel. So I was very tired. At that time, I couldn't remember anything. So I went straight to the washing machine. If you don't want to wear those old clothes again, I can take you to buy you new ones. I've wanted to take you shopping many times, but every time you criticize me for wasting your son's money, so I... Of course, you'll have to buy me lots of new clothes. It's your fault anyway. But remember, you have to buy them with your own money. Of course, Louisa. After work, I will pick you up to buy new clothes. Wait, Corrine? Where did you hide my ID? Why can't I find it anywhere? I remember clearly putting it in the suitcase, but now I can't find it? You hid it so I couldn't get on the plane, right? You really are a trickster. Now I understand why you secretly called the hotel last night to upgrade your room to a suite. Because you know for sure you won't have to spend any more money on me, right? Oh, your ID card? I'm keeping it here. But it's not like what you're thinking. What? I knew it right away! It was you who stole my ID card. If I hadn't found out today, you would have thrown away my ID card and pretended you didn't know? I know you never liked me now! Louisa! No matter how much you don't like me, don't blame me over and over again. Why don't you try to find out the truth before blaming me? I found your ID card mixed up in your dirty clothes. So I picked it up and put it in my pocket, but forgot to give it to you. You mean I purposely hid it to put the blame on you? Louisa, calm down. I didn't do any of that on purpose. It was a mistake, and I never wanted to sabotage your trip. I've always tried to be understanding and accommodating toward you, but all you do is criticize and accuse me. Ha! You're just trying to turn things around and make me the villain. You know very well that you canceled my visits and made excuses to keep me away. I'm telling you, it was a mistake. I was exhausted and things got mixed up. I never meant to ruin your clothes or keep you from traveling. And stealing your ID? That's ridiculous. Why would I do that? Louisa, please. I really value our relationship. And I booked this Hawaii trip to celebrate your birthday and spend time together as a family. I didn't mean to upset you or ruin anything. Oh, spare me the sweetness now, Corrine. It's hard to believe you booked this trip for me when you always find ways to keep me away from your family. I promise you, Louisa, that wasn't my intention at all. I respect and like you, and I wanted to make your birthday special. Special? By using my hard-earned money for this trip? How considerate of you. You know I work tirelessly for every penny, and here you are, spending it without a second thought. I didn't mean to upset you. I wanted to give you a gift, something special. Can we please try to understand each other instead of arguing like this? Fine, fine. But don't think I'll let you do whatever you want.
I'm going to pick up a honey substitute at the store to cook the ham for dinner. I also need to get some necessary stuff for tomorrow's flight. Would you mind watching the kids so I can go? Huh? I wouldn't want you to pick out groceries by yourself. You don't know how to choose delicious and healthy foods for your kids, do you? You only know how to spend all of my son's money. I'll come with you to observe to make sure you don't waste any money on stupid things. Huh? What do you mean? I always choose delicious things at reasonable prices for the kids. Oh really? Then why are you buying green bell peppers instead of red bell peppers? Don't you know that red bell peppers contain the most nutrients? I just can't understand how you've been taking care of my son and grandchildren all these years. But the kids prefer green bell peppers. You can't always give in to what the kids want. Is that why the house is always filled with unhealthy snacks and sweets that can rot their teeth? Their little brains are already rotting from all those electronics. I won't let their teeth rot too. Ugh. You always care more about your patients than your family. It's not like that. At least I never made my kids eat spoiled and rancid food. What? Food spoiled and rancid? Have I ever fed the kids spoiled food? You must not slander me. I would never do anything to harm my grandchildren like that. What are you trying to imply? Are you trying to start a war with me? That's not what I meant. I was just saying that yesterday, you secretly took the tomatoes from the trash, cut the still good parts to put in the casserole, even though I made it very clear to you that they were spoiled and no longer usable. And as a result, both Penelope and Max had stomach aches this morning. Thankfully, after I washed the dishes and took out the garbage, I saw that the rotten tomatoes had disappeared and understood the issue. So I gave the two children medicine to prevent stomach aches, so it wasn't too dangerous. But I think next time you shouldn't save so much money. How can you be sure that kids' stomach aches are because of those tomatoes and not because you let them eat too much junk food? You're just trying to blame me. I don't mean to blame you at all. I just want to bring it to your attention so you can be more careful next time. Huh. You're so good now, you even know how to teach your mother-in-law. If you already want to feed your kids fresh food, why choose to buy honey substitute instead of raw honey? Do you know how many chemicals are in honey substitute? Well, it's inevitable because I'm allergic to raw honey, so I have to use a substitute. Oh, don't overreact it, okay? It's just a normal allergy. At most, it's just a little itchy rash, then it's okay to apply some medicine. No, Louisa, I'm really heavily allergic. Once. Jonathan and I went on a date, and even though we told the waiter not to give us real honey but to replace it with a substitute, he forgot, so I accidentally ate a piece. And after that, I felt like my throat was blocked, couldn't breathe, and was hospitalized for a week. So every time I go to buy honey, I have to double check to make sure I get the right kind of honey substitute, because only one drop of raw honey can make me suffer. Otherwise, I'll have to stay at home without being able to join the family trip. Oh, is that so? That sounds dangerous. Then we should be careful. Haha. <laughs> Hurry up, come pick me up and let's get prepared for my birthday gift. Louisa, why are you suddenly so eager to go to the supermarket with me? You seem really excited about this trip to Hawaii. Oh, don't read too much into it. I just realized that this outing is an opportunity for us to spend some time together before the trip. I can't wait to relax with Jonathan and the two grandchildren in Hawaii. Hmm. It's just that you seemed so critical and upset earlier, and now you're all excited. It's like a complete turnaround. Well, people can change their moods, can't they? Let's just make the most of this outing and enjoy our time together. All right, if that's what you want. I'm looking forward to the trip too. It'll be a great time for all of us. Oh, I'm so happy. So today, I've decided that I'll cook dinner tonight on my own, and you won't have to help me. Louisa, are you sure you want to cook all by yourself? I can help you prepare the meal if you need any assistance. No, no, my dear. Today, I want to do something special for you. I appreciate the birthday present and the effort you put into planning this trip. Let me show my gratitude by cooking a delicious and special meal for you. This will definitely be the most memorable dinner that you'll never forget. <laughs> oh, that's so nice of you. I can't wait to taste your cooking. I'm sure it'll be amazing. Oh my gosh, Corrine, stop being so dramatic. You can stop with your jokes now. Why do you feel nauseous after trying a piece of my meat? Are you trying to insult the food I made? Mom, what are you saying? Corrine wasn't pretending. She is still unconscious and the doctors are still examining her. 
Are you sure you didn't put real honey in yesterday's dish? Corinne's last expression was exactly the same as last time when she accidentally ate real honey. Huh? Jonathan? Is that you? Why do you have Corinne's phone? Oh, that's not the problem. Is Corinne still in a coma? Isn't she just having a little trouble breathing? And why are you asking me if I put honey in the food? I didn't. I only used ingredients that Corinne bought at the supermarket. You should be asking her. Oh no! What's happening to Corinne? She's shaking non-stop and can't breathe. The doctor said she didn't react to the injection. Oh no, she's going into anaphylactic shock. This is really dangerous, oh no! What? I... I didn't know her allergy was this bad. Why? Why did this happen? She didn't eat anything she's allergic to, right Louisa? This doesn't make any sense. Yes, that's right. Unbelievable. The doctors keep asking me if Corinne ate anything unusual. They keep saying that answering honestly will help them determine the course of the treatment because Corinne is in critical condition. But I've confirmed so many times that you cooked dinner and didn't put any honey in it. What do we do now, Mom? Oh, I lied. I'm so sorry, but I lied. I didn't think everything would go this far. You... What did you do? What did you do to my wife? I put honey on the ham. I am so, so sorry. I didn't mean for it to go this far. I just thought she didn't want me to go on the trip and I thought I'd make sure she couldn't go. I never meant for this to happen. Oh my god, Corinne, I'm so sorry. Please, stay with us. Oh my god, how could you do this? I can't believe you actually did this to me. Huh? What? What's going on? Who are you? Are you Jonathan or Corinne? It's me, Corinne. I really hoped it was just a misunderstanding and that I was thinking too much. But in the end, you are still heartless toward me. Oh my god, Corinne! Are you awake? Oh my god, you're so lucky, you're fine. I thought you were... Going to die? Is that what you wanted? No! Absolutely not. Oh god, I'm... I'm just so confused. Why did Jonathan just tell me you were in critical condition and now you're texting me like this? Don't you understand? Then let me explain it to you. Yesterday, when we were at the supermarket, I couldn't help but notice you were buying something on your own. I thought it was strange, but I didn't dig into it too much. When we got home, you insisted on doing all the cooking. I know you like to take over the kitchen, but this time you didn't want me around at all. I know you said you wanted to cook me something special, but I still felt weird. That's when I found your receipt for raw honey in the trash. It all became clear to me what your plan was. Does that mean you found out about my plan from the beginning? So why didn't you say anything and still ate that piece of meat? Because I wanted to know if you were so heartless and hateful towards me that you would really harm me. So before dinner, I decided to talk to Jonathan about your plan and also let him know that I was going to fake my allergy symptoms and wanted him to work with me to get me to the hospital. To keep the kids from worrying, I even told them that this was just a joke to surprise their grandma and told them not to tell you anything. I hoped you wouldn't actually go through with it, and I even gave you a chance to tell the truth. Before I cut that piece of meat, I even asked if you were using the right honey substitute, and you assured me you did. Wait, that means you actually ate that piece of meat, right? If so, why are you still so healthy? Is it a lie that you said you're allergic to honey? Actually, I didn't eat it. While you weren't paying attention, I threw that piece of meat under the table and pretended to chew it. So you see, I never ate the meat you made. Because I knew what you were up to all along. And you already know what happens next. So you were planning all this to trick me? How could you find out? I was careful. You were supposed to suffer a little and learn your lesson. Not end up like this. You're doing this to make Jonathan mad at me and stop talking to me so you never have to see me again, right? Unbelievable. You are such an evil daughter-in-law. I don't understand. Are you kidding me? Learn my lesson? What kind of sick plan is that? You put my life at risk just because you were upset about the trip? Why do you always think so poorly of me? I have always treated you well and took care of you. Can't you see a bit of my effort? Nice. Oh, come on, Corrine. Let's be honest, you hate me. Huh? I don't hate you. It's just a little annoying to constantly be criticized for my cooking, my cleaning, my parenting, and how much money I spend. 
Well, you do spend a lot. I know just how hard my son works to provide for you all. And frankly, it hurts me. Looks like Jonathan hasn't told you the truth yet. Truth? What truth are you talking about? Well, Jonathan lost his job a few months ago. You are lying, right? Yesterday morning and today, I saw Jonathan at work. He is just pretending. Jonathan is not working. He is applying for a job. He was too shy and knew that if you found out, you would scold him. So he deliberately kept this from you and avoided seeing you for a long time. That's why my family had to constantly cancel your visits because he knows you always brag to your neighbors and friends about your successful son. That inadvertently put pressure on Jonathan and scared him when you found out the truth. So... So all expenses in the house are paid by... By me! I had to work a lot of overtime at the hospital to earn money to take care of my family because now I'm the only one earning money in the house. Wait, if you only have one source of income, then why are you spending money on things like upgrading your hotel room? Not our room, it's your room. I had some special news I wanted to share with you, and I wanted to do it while you were in a suite. I thought you would be happier. What? What's the good news? I originally wanted to tell you that I'm pregnant. We're having a third baby in the family. What? You're pregnant? Really? Unbelievable! Will I be a grandma again? That's wonderful! No, Louisa. Yes, we'll have another baby, but you won't have any more grandsons. Actually, to be more precise, you don't have any grandchildren. What? What do you mean? I have Max, I have Penelope, and a baby in your belly. Are you kidding me right now? Think about it. You almost killed the baby in my belly with your own hands. If I really ate a piece of meat with honey at that time, you can't understand the pain and fear I felt, Louisa. The thought of losing my baby because of your cruel actions, it's unimaginable. So, Jonathan and I have decided to cut all ties with you. Oh, come on, Corrine. Please, forgive my mistake. I promise to never touch honey again. After all, it's just a small lesson. The baby is fine anyway, so there's no need to be so stressed. Heartless and no regret? You still don't get it, do you, Louisa? Your actions nearly cost me my baby's life, and you think I'm overreacting? How can you be so callous and dismissive about something so serious? I never said I wasn't sorry, but you're blowing this out of proportion. The baby is fine, and you're fine too. What more do you want from me? I want you to understand the gravity of what you did. It's not just about the physical well-being, it's about the emotional trauma you put me through. I can't trust you anymore, and I can't stand the thought of you being around my family. You're being unreasonable, Corrine. People make mistakes, and I said I'm sorry. Why can't you just forgive and move on? Of course we'll move on, but it will be moving on without your presence. In the days that followed, she continued to stay in our house and begged us to forgive her, even though we asked her to leave many times. Jonathan was furious with her and made a bold decision. He took the whole family to live temporarily at my mother's house for a while. Then he called the police and accused Louisa of trespassing. Louisa was detained in the police station for a few days because there was no one to bail her out. Well, she even celebrated her birthday in jail. While Louisa was in prison, Jonathan put the old house up for sale, and my family moved to a new place to stay away from Louisa. We cut all ties with her, and it was a painful decision, but we knew it was necessary for the safety and well-being of our family. After cutting ties with Louisa, our family found peace and harmony. Jonathan eventually found a new job, and we settled into our new home, which turned out to be a better fit for us. We focused on strengthening our bonds and creating new memories together, the pregnancy went smoothly, and we welcomed our third child with joy and love. Over time, we healed from the pain and trauma caused by Luisa's actions. We surrounded ourselves with supportive and caring friends, and our family grew stronger than ever. The kids flourished in their new environment, and I continued to thrive in my nursing career. As the years went by, Jonathan and I watched our children grow, and we embraced every moment of parenthood. We made sure our children knew the importance of honesty, trust, and love. We created a home filled with laughter, understanding, and forgiveness. Though we never forgot the past, we chose not to dwell on it. Instead, we focus on building a bright and loving future for our family. 
The experience with Luisa taught us valuable lessons about the importance of setting boundaries, standing up for ourselves, and prioritizing the well-being of our family.